Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us again for another session of Welcome Webinars. Today, we are here with Tyler Pate, a creative problem solver and our director and graphic designer, who's here to show us and talk to us about vector illustrations. He's going to share some tips with us today. I'm your host, Elizabeth Garcia. Remember that this session will last around one hour. We'll allow some time for Q&A. Please use the Zoom Q&A feature to submit your questions. We'll do our best to answer all of them, but I will be fielding the questions due to time constraints. Please take some time to check out Tyler Pate on social media. We have listed his handles here. He also um, handles or manages, is the creator of the Creative Pane Online. It's an excellent channel for inspiration. Please check him out. And for all of us attending today, our friends at the East Store at Wacom have offered up $50. When you purchase a Wacom one using this special code all through May 14th. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello, Tyler, how are you? Hello, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining us today and showing us uh, your vector magic. Absolutely, it's my pleasure and it's always a joy to create something new. Well, thank you so much. Uh, today you're gonna show us uh, part of your creation process. You're gonna do a little illustration for us. Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping to, to nail this down within an hour. I, I kind of have already planned everything out and I'll show you how that process you know, works. Typically, I, I do this for about every illustration that I, I create. You know, I'm, I'm going out there and I'm looking for inspiration and, and then concepting, coming up with sketch. And then to this sta stage where we are now, where we're gonna get into Adobe Illustrator and we're gonna create this thing from scratch. Excellent. Thank you so much. Let's get started. Awesome. All right. So I don't know if any of you have seen this from my social media. I teased this a little bit, but I did this sketch, you know, leading up to, to this Wacom uh, webinar where I wanted something that is, you know, a little cheeky. And I think a lot of my work is, is around some sort of humorous element. And it allows me to, to really hone in on everything that I enjoy about design because I'm an illustrator and designer, but that last little piece, designer, you know, I love to create ideas, brands, and, and just play with typography. So I thought this piece was able to wrap all of that into one for us. So hey, Tyler, what- can you share your screen? Um, what, right now we're only looking at you and your camera. Can you share your mm -hmm. computer screen? Absolutely. There you go. Thank Perfect. you. So what we were saying is this illustration is kind of what I, I've been working on. And I just, real simple, my goal here is to get the idea on paper and kind of somewhat lay out what is going to be where. And again, I'm in Adobe Illustrator. So this is kind of what my, my workflow starts out as. You know, I have my artboard right here. And I just, you know, take a picture of, you know, or scan it in the sketch that I had for reference. And then I start pulling other reference materials. This is a piece that I did leading up to this with uh, Wacom. And I know I wanna kind of mimic this, this figure right here. I, I really enjoyed the illustration of this girl and the color of the hair. So I wanted to pull that in here. I'm already you know, defining my color palettes. I have a reference for a tablet. I also have these references of what I really find fun, which is, these little action figures, you know, all random, but things that I'm looking at is like, all right, this is a typical way of laying out design for, you know, packaging. And there's always this little clear container. And this is a fun one where, you know, it's really distressed. And that's where I'm, you know, I think more, more known for is, is that distress and, and just keeping it kind of ragged. And then I started playing around with what the branding is going to be. Since this is typically what takes the most time for me, I went ahead and, and kind of explored this on my own before this started. 
but what this is going to do is give us all the ingredients to jump into this and start applying it. So starting uh, with this piece here, I think what's most important is I start from the furthest point of the illustration and kind of work my way up. So I would think of that as this back card. So I'm going to start making that piece first. And that's going to have all the text and all the type and kind of give me some positions of where these characters and objects are going to go. So let's dive into that. Going to use... Tyler, can you tell us uh, what you're working on right now? You're working on a Cintiq Pro? Yes, can you yes that's you exactly can... right. So if you could see in the other camera that I have here is this is my, my desktop. I, I have a 27 inch Cintiq Wacom tablet. Uh, I think this is like the HD model. Um, it might've been 2014 when I bought this, but uh, it's, it's been a great workhorse and you know, it gives me plenty of room to kind of work across the screen. I'm able to, you know, if you're looking at that second camera, you're seeing now all of my, my toolboxes and, and settings can kind of stay to one side. I'm right-handed, so it helps to have everything underneath that one hand. Excellent. And do you always uh, use gloves while you're drawing? Uh, that's probably like a, a good little secret. If you ever start playing around with drawing tablets or screens, I mean, you've probably seen people use them. I, I definitely was one of those designers like, ah, that glove seems kind of funny looking. I don't think I'm going to do that. And then once I started migrating to full time on a screen like this, you'll realize that your hand, you know, sometimes grips the screen or sometimes you don't have that fluid motion because, I mean, it is, it's like a plastic film. So this glove provides that little bit of, you know, um, less friction so I can slide my hand across and keep the screen clean too. So what I'm doing here is I'm just playing around with my shapes. I'm just shape, you know, my rectangle tool here and I'm just laying out this design. So I know it's going to have some curves here and there, but for now, I think I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. I'll usually pick colors that, I mean, they're going to change down the, down the way of this process, but the colors help me define shapes that are on top of each other. So I'm going to go back to some of the stuff that I told you I created earlier. I thought this was a funny little pun that I wanted to add for the branding. And again, I, I just, you know, paired some fonts together that I thought was fitting for what I was doing here. Um, I put some, some text warps on it. So it, it got, it, it got to where I had this kind of wave effect to the creative and then illustrator. And then if you outline that you're able to, then have solid shapes like you see here. Uh, I think on Adobe Illustrator, right? Yes. Yeah, so this is Adobe Illustrator CC. Uh, this should be the latest one. So I, I have the subscription to it. So I, I try to stay as up to date as I can. Is that your default? Uh, Adobe Illustrator? Oh yeah. Um, well, it depends, you know, I, it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm illustrating, yeah, that's probably my default. Uh, but if I'm building a logo design or, or any other sort of um, design support, I mean, Photoshop's, you know, kind of my primary tool as well. And, you know, InDesign, I've done some animation. So that's also working with Adobe After Effects. You know, all the tools kind of help each other once you get to learn the suite. And as you see what I'm trying to do here, I'm just trying to lay out where my text is going to go and where the objects are, are going to be scaled from. And you'll see why I'm laying everything out flat. I'm going to add dimension to this. Again, if we reference back to our, our little sketch here, I have a slight angle on this. I want it to be slightly three-dimensional. I'm going to get to that. But first, we have to completely design this back card out as a flat piece. Friend Liz uh, wants to know if you have any favorite shortcuts on Illustrator. Oh man, that's a good question. Uh, I think my go-to is probably Command M, and that's like the shape. I think it was like a merger tool. So if I had, let's say, I'll quickly show you the example. If I had this shape here, change that color there, and I had another shape above it like this, 
let's say I need this little center square, right? Those overlapping pieces. So if you do, sorry, it's actually shift M. If you do shift M, then you're able to select that one piece and color in right there. And what that just did is that separated it. You could do this with Pathfinder, but it's so much quicker once you start playing around that tool and you could just separate your shapes. And you'll see that once I start jumping into this guy. Uh, what, what else do we need? We need the little hanger that goes right here. So that's kind of a funny shape. There's various ways of doing that. You know, some people do them like that. Sometimes they're like that. Again, you see how I'm constantly going back to my reference material because I want to I wanna spoof that. So I think I got the general idea of that shape. Gonna create some circles here. Let's see, this is, I'm gonna copy this height value. So if I copy that, if I now use my rectangle tool, I'll just click. If you just click on it, you then get this. So what that's gonna help me with is I'm gonna go ahead and paste that, that height value in there. And this is now the exact same height as these circles. And you'll see right now what I'm about to do with that. It's gonna connect the two like this. So now I have a nice little cylinder and you could do this, you know, so many other ways. I just typically like to build my shapes and create something from scratch. That's about what that shape is going to be. Delete that. I'll bring this piece up. Now you see how we're starting, starting to get this little shape here. It's a little, little chubby. So I'm going to, let's see move this one out, stretch this. Some of the so things that I'm, oh, go ahead. Sorry, um, so say somebody's not able to pay for Adobe Illustrator. Our friend Tiana wants to know, is there anything other software similar, which, you know, for vector that works well with vector that you know of? Uh, I think a lot of people use, what is it, Procreate? I think that's the software people are using for like apps and you could, you could draw on your phone or an iPad or anything like that. I don't personally use it, but I know it's a lot cheaper than Adobe CC from what I've been told. But it, it is tricky. I mean, there, there's a moment where, you know, products or, or software gets to be a little expensive and it's like, well, how do you get into, a career where it's hard to just afford the products to get up and running. I mean, it, it's, I don't know. I don't know how to really tell you the, the shortcuts to that, but you have to think of it as an investment. That's what I could tell you for sure. I'm going to start aligning everything to this artboard so I can make sure everything's centered. Okay, so let's reference back to this piece. So this little plastic container that's gonna go over this person that needs to be needs to be made. So just using my shape builder tool again, this is a rectangle tool, just to get a contrast of color. Whoops. I think that should be the body about there. I just copied and then if you do command F, that will paste that object exactly where you copied it from. So you see how it duplicated on top of that previous shape. That's another tool that I, I probably use hundreds of times in an in a illustration. I'm a real stickler when it comes to editing certain shapes that sometimes I might need to go back to and reference. So if I'm editing every shape and I don't have a master to go back to. Sometimes that, that'll shoot me in the foot. That should be good. I think Tyler, when sketching um, lists 
wants to know if you're primarily only using reference materials or you just also sketch just using your imagination. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, this sketch right here was something I did. Uh, if you look, this is my sketchbook. So that's the original sketch that I made. And I'm just, you know, referencing that. That's, that's my concept. But with this particular concept, I am referencing action figures, you know? So the creative illustrator, that's, that's kind of the, the idea to it. So there's certain things that I'm referencing something in real life. So I need to mimic that a little bit. And that's where those other images that I showed earlier come into play. Just fine tuning it. See, it's all trial and error to a certain degree because I have the idea, I have the copy that I'm gonna be using, kind of the, the color palette sort of, but I also need to fit it all in here together because if you see my sketch, I have this other block here where the Wacom's gonna be and then the cup of coffee's gonna be. I'm gonna have to make sure I have space for that. So, I may take some edits. I'm gonna use the same shape, bring it down. Here's another good quick key command. If you do Command U, you'll turn your smart guides on. You see how everything's highlighting and crazy like connecting points. So that's referencing other shapes nearby. So that can quickly line stuff up. Send some shapes back. So this is gonna be another little plastic container with all the creative accessories. copy and then command F on top of each other. So now you see that this is completely flush with that shape underneath because I copied it and pasted it on top. So that's, that's like a big, big saving of time for me because I don't have to worry about aligning it or, or potentially having my lines not aligned perfectly. All right, I'm gonna merge this. Starting to box everything out. Mm, I'll work with this little bit of type right here. Let's see if we can fit that in there. Maybe make this bigger. So I was kind of playing with this branding for this piece. Uh, you know, it's the struggling artist for, for everyone out there who's just trying to make a living from it and, and just level up, so to speak. I mean, it takes time. And a lot of times if you're working with clients, you'll, you'll kind of understand what I'm saying. It takes understanding feedback. It takes really trying to be the best designer you can be and, and just, what am I doing? hundred percent. So I was kind of mimicking some like guidelines for this branding. So just to show you what I was doing with it. Do you do a lot task. of branding work, Tyler? Mm -hmm. I do. I do a lot of, you know, logo designs and, and just brand development. That's, that's one of the things I, I have a background in. And I, I've previously worked for design agencies where, you know, I was designing logos, designing websites, and then doing a little bit of things like this, which is illustrating. And, and you know, since, since then, I, I've kind of gone out and taken illustrating a bit more serious and it's definitely something I enjoy doing for fun. So if you ever catch me on off time, I'm probably illustrating something new. All right, back to what we we're saying. This is needing this little piece of text. And if you eye drop tool something with a stroke, you'll you understand what I'm doing here. It'll really mess your text up. Hey Tyler, have you ever tried uh, Chanel wants, Chanel Zapata wants to know if you've tried Affinity Designer. It's supposed to be an alternative to Illustrator. Affinity. Uh, Affinity. I have I have not, no. Um, 
it's probably worth trying. Uh, I need to look into it. I think it does get back to, you know, what you're familiar with. And I definitely, I get used to using the same tool and just trying to master it because I mean, Adobe Illustrator by itself is just such a massive tool. Let's see if I can get this little star here. Do you always work from home, Tyler, uh, or are you also on the go? Uh, I, I work from home probably nine times out of 10, but I mean, it is flexible enough to, you know, I love traveling. You know, it's, it's kind of a misfortunate opportunity we're all in where we, we have to work from home a little bit more than we normally would. But uh, taking this kind of stuff on the go is, is always my dream because I don't necessarily have to be in an office or at a desk. When you travel, what do you like to take with you to, to create? Mm, obviously, your Cintiq is too big. Do you have a, a tablet or um, something else that you take with you? Uh, well, I try to definitely plan ahead. <laughs> I mean, if there's a, a heavy illustrated project, I, I definitely, I like to stick to the Cintiq as much as possible. Uh, I, I did recently try out the Wacom One and you know it's pretty cool i i did take that uh to a coffee shop once and and tested it out and see how how it works in that mobile environment and it's pretty it's a great product for the sake of you know affordability uh, i mean you can't really compare that to anything else for what you're getting but uh i have a laptop and i can generally work from a laptop because i mean i started with you know like I would assume most uh, a mouse and cursor. <laughs> so I could still illustrate with that, but it's just a lot easier with a Cintiq or just a stylus. Yeah, I was gonna ask, did you, uh, did you use a tablet before Cintiq and which tablet did you use? Did oh man, you no, you talk about, I, I put it off for such a long time. I was like, man, I really wanna get one of those Cintiqs. And you know, it's just the, the price was always the problem back then. So whenever I finally, you know, saved up and I was like, all right, I'm going to buy one. I've never been on a Cintiq. I've never even been on a Wacom, but I knew the Cintiq was a great product. I, I've reviewed it. I've looked at reviews and I, I know a lot of my peers were using it. So I knew that was what I was going to get. So I just, I took a, a face dive into it. I, I was like, well, if I invest in this and I think of it as that, I know I'm not going to let myself uh, become lazy and not use it because it's, you know, it's an investment. So I forced myself that way to, uh, to buy one and just get started with it. And that's probably where everything started and hadn't looked back since. Okay. Let's start rounding some corners. This is a good feature here. I mean, once you, once Illustrator came out with this tool, this is a game changer corner radius I used to have to do all this stuff by hand it took forever just round corners and that's like rounding all the corners at once which is pretty fun except this one there we go So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to really nail down all of these shapes on the packaging. So once I start messing with angles, it doesn't mess it up too much. Change this stuff to red. Maybe this one to black. Tyler, when you, you know, stop using mouse and start using a drawing tablet, Alexandra mm -hmm. wants to know, how long did it take you to get used to drawing on a tablet? And what was your biggest challenge if you had one? Uh, biggest challenge, what, I mean, it was, it was hard. At first, I, I went from mouse straight to Wacom Cintiq. So there was, a, there was a learning curve at first for me. I just wasn't used to 
looking at where I was going. You know, I was so used to doing this while drawing. And with this tablet, I'm just like, okay, well, what is the pressure sensitivities like? How do I, how do I edit that? And it took about a month for me to get to where I could never see using a mouse as being the most efficient way. That's honestly how I saw it. I was like, all right, I don't see how I could ever go back to a mouse to, to do these illustrations. I mean, I said earlier, of course I can, but it is so much better to do it this way. Okay, so looks like I'm just clicking, making a bunch of clicks and moving things back and forth over and over. But what I'm doing is trying to get a feel for objects because I'm thinking about what's gonna happen here next, which is I'm gonna start making things a little bit more three-dimensional. Mm, thinking about this, okay. So we'll make this slightly lighter. This would be that plastic piece that that's usually glued directly to the packaging. I would probably spend more time playing with colors if, if it was just me on my, my own. But again, I really want to try to get this knocked out and the concept fleshed out within an hour. So that's kind of my priority here. Okay, and what I was doing here, this is, I'll do it again. I told you, I love keeping a master copy of everything that I do. I'll just drag and drop a duplicate down somewhere else in the artboard so that I can always have something to go back to. That's, that's such a big thing for when you start, or if you start making mistakes. Okay, and then this is gonna be the Wacom Cintiq. We'll just make him darker color. I like that color. Typically don't do stark black. Retro vibes, something that's faded or muted is what I go for. Hey, Tyler, talking about color, um, Saish wants to know if you have a way to find a good color palette or is it just on the go? Uh, no, I, I, I probably use inspirational sites the most for color. Uh, you know, looking at places like Dribbble, Behance, uh, honestly, I, I've curated my Instagram feed so, so much to where every time I get on Instagram, I'm, I'm just seeing other artists that I love to see. Um, I'm seeing what they're working on. I'm seeing, you know, curated, other curated channels posting in my feed. So the inspiration's always there. Uh, and I'll just save things that look fun or cool. Or it's like, oh, I love that color. That would be a perfect color for project A, B, or C whenever I get to it. And it's, you know, I think that's what I love so much about uh, a creative community. It's just, it's about sharing things like that. And, you know, some people will say like, oh, well, that idea has been done before. Or, oh, well, that's the same color palette as, you know, this over here. But you can think of a million ways of doing that same stuff in your own way. That's like sharing process. I mean, you guys could see how I'm making this, but I guarantee if you start creating it, this same piece, it will come out different. If I was to make this thing twice, it would come out different again. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm ready to start distorting this thing. I'm going to use, let's see, this perspective tool. So if you click E or press E, you'll then get this transformation tool. And if you you can kind of do anything like this, you know, but what I typically use it for is this. So I'm able to change that, that axis of, I guess that would be my horizontal line. So I can slightly angle it. And you see how everything's moving by, you know, by itself, which is really nice. It's distorting everything at the same time because that 
that angle that I end up with is the same angle I'm going to use throughout this whole piece. Let's angle it just a little more. And you know, if you if you're going up and down and trying to get this to distort, if you press shift or hold shift while you're doing this, it'll keep it where it goes straight up and down. It's just another little thing to help. All right, so now we're getting into our angles. So we're gonna start with these little plastic bubble pieces. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna drag it and duplicate one ahead of it. So I just drag that same shape over. Uh, let's just turn it to, let's say a slight blue tint. All right, so now I need to start building the walls out. You'll see like connecting these shapes. If you have a pen tool, you could do it this way where it'll kind of snap into place. Can you repeat that command? People are really liking that. Uh, which one? The duplicate? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you, if you click on the shape and hold option while dragging, it'll do that. So while clicking down on the shape and then hold option and drag that shape over to the left or right, it'll duplicate it. And then what I'm going to do here is kind of build this wall out. Here's another good key command to use is command Y. That's called outline mode. You'll use this once you, you start illustrating heavily because the, what you'll notice is as you're building shapes, you're, you're layering things and some things kind of get out of view and you can't quite see them. But if you mash command Y, you, uh, you'll see every little line that exists, even if it's hidden. So I'm just snapping lines right now, trying to fill in this. And you'll see what I'm doing with this here in a bit. I'm just trying to get that bottom line connecting. Let's say right about, let's, you know what, let's actually try to think this one through. I think that actually might be fine to do it like that. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm selecting that shape. I'm selecting that red shape there. And I'm selecting that new shape that I just made. And using the shift M, I told you about that shape merger tool. Now I'm able to see all the shapes that I can make from the overlaps. I'm going to connect this one to where I have, I have a side piece now. So copy that. And I'm going to match command Z. I, I copied that shape now. So that's in my, that's in my clipboard, but I'm going to command Z all the way back until I'm where I started and delete the shape. So I'm back from square one, but if you mash command F, it pastes that shape right where it was before. So that's, I hope that was able to uh, make sense to you, but that's how I build my shapes. I'm usually cutting things out and then copy them back in. So I have clean shapes. There's no excess uh, points or anything like that to mess with. And then this is where I start to get that dimension. So this was that angle that I had, this is gonna be the whole dimension of this piece. So what I'm doing is if I copy this line, I just copied that line, it's in my clipboard. I'm gonna go back up here and I need to connect this red shape to this white shape, just like how I just did before. Command V, that's that angle. That's the angle of this whole piece that I need to repeat whenever I'm building a shape out. So we're gonna do the same thing. Try to connect things to make sure they line up. 
Hey, See Tyler. Mm -hmm. Are you working on one layer or multiple layers? Right now, I'm just working on one layer. I do have everything kind of uh, over here and organized. And my plan is to have all of this backboard on one layer, which is like my back card. And then this plastic piece is going to be on the plastic layer. But I'm building the plastic layer right now, so I'll, I'll move that up in my layers when I'm ready. Because whenever you're merging shapes, like how I'm doing, it tend to merge layers. So there's probably a better way of doing that, but I have found that to be the best way I have. Let's go ahead and lock this piece. So I'm just building this plastic shape. See how that happened? And now I have this piece, which I can paste back into place. And you see how everything's starting to, you know, sort of protrude outward? Because I'm using that same, same angle. This angle should never change throughout the piece. Uh, it's just now, it, it just takes time to connect the dots, so to speak. So I'm going to do the same thing for right here. I mean, it helps to have an understanding of perspective because that's typically what I'm doing. I'm just building perspective by connecting lines. And I use my shape building tools to, to merge and and start forming some unique shapes. I'm just zooming in and out, trying to get that line to overlap. Because if you overlap the lines, then you can, you can merge shapes that way. If it's not overlapping, then it won't merge. Tyler, how long have you been using Illustrator to be able to use it so quickly and know it so well? Uh, about seven years. I would say heavily the past since 2017. Like I, I think the moments that I can look back and say, all right, that was a moment where I kind of leveled up in terms of taking something really, really seriously. And that was, it goes back to that walk on when I got, when I had that walk on, that's when I really took it serious. I was like, all right, I've, I've got to put all my time into this because, you know, again, it's an investment. That's how I, I tricked myself to, splurging on an amazing tool. All right, what I'm doing here is I need to see that distance. There's a distance in between the back card and then the front of the plastic piece. So I'm gonna mimic what I just did over there since I gotta make another one of those bubbles. Or I'm gonna call these bubbles, little plastic pieces. So I need this angle. And sorry if it looks a little complicated. It, it's, it's not so bad once you see the end of this one process. You'll, you'll start seeing it come together. So there's that. I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna bring this out. It's right about there. I don't need this piece. So Tyler, I'm sure it varies, but multiple people have and uh, asked this question about how many hours does it typically take for you to complete an illustration? Yeah, it varies. Uh, I would say a quick, I, I mean, it, does, it just really depends on what the subject matter is. I typically have a sweet spot around whenever I'm having fun with something, probably five to six hours. That's me having fun. And I mean, there's been some that, that go on into uh, 15 hours. It just depends on, on what it is. Uh, certain types of illustrations really depict that, such as if I was doing something like isometric view or if I was uh, illustrating faces, 
I don't know if if you look at some of my work that I've done in the past, I've done quite a few portraits of people. Those give me the hardest time. Uh, I don't know if it's like that for the majority of you, but man, that is the one thing I can get there, but it will take time because it gets down to likeness. You can get a figure looking like a person, but it might not look like the person you're trying to go after. So that's the tricky part to it. But the more that I've done, quicker I've been. What's that? Oh, sorry. When you get a chance, um, I also, s multiple people are asking about uh, the transformation command. How do you retain the below shapes when using the shape builder? Uh, so whenever you're, you have to select all the shapes that you want to transform. So if you have five shapes overlapping, collect, like select all five of those, and then you're going to see like divide lines appear. And you have to kind of pick and choose which divide line you need to pick. Because at that point, all you're doing is just drawing within those divide lines. And that pro or that tool just kind of fills it in for you. I'm try I'll show you like with this example. So I'm trying to fill this top shape in just like how I did over here. See how that, whenever I hover, I'm not clicking, I'm just hovering. It starts selecting shapes that I've selected and then all the divide lines. So what I'm gonna do is divide this top piece. So I just merged this whole section and it looks like it's not there, but that's just because there's no feel. Watch what happens if I click this. Now it's looking just like how that other piece was. Nice, nice and simple. Once you delete all your excess lines. And I need to do the same down here. Yeah, and you, you start to see where my, my dimension comes from. It's, I'm using that same line. I'm using the same perspective line in all of my connecting points. Because if you keep that same angle, you're going to have a consistent, consistent piece. See where it's overlapping? So I back out. Select that, select that, that, and let's see if we can merge this. And now we have this. Perfect. All right, so what we need to start doing now is building these objects like the Wacom. All right, so you talked about my, my layers. This is where this is gonna come in. I'm gonna select all of what is the plastic piece that's all the plastic, right? And I'm gonna bring those up to a different layer. Now they're in my plastic layer. I'm gonna lock that and I'm gonna hide it because I need to start working on these pieces that go inside this piece. And I think I just messed up with this shape right here. So I'm gonna Command Z real quick. Just bear with me on this. All right, this needs to stay the same. Command Z, that, that will be the one you will forever use. There we go. I just went back and grabbed that shape that I messed up through cutting everything up. All right, so this Wacom tablet needs to be made. Let's see, I would start by copy, Command F. I duplicated the shape. Luckily, the screen is kind of proportionate. I'm looking at my screen right now while I'm building this thing. And it typically has a larger panels on the side than the top. And if you scale down by holding, um, holding shift and option, it'll start scaling from the center of that object. See how that did? And that honestly, that leaves us with something we really don't have to change that much. I'll just, uh, 
I'll just make it a blue screen for now. But what I need to do now is select these top points because a Wacom tablet, and this is getting real meta right now, it has an angle to it. So I need to add that angle because it needs to look like it's kind of leaning off the cardstock here. Make this a darker color. Using that same angle I used for the plastic piece. We'll go back to it real quick. I still need to use the same angle for everything. It doesn't matter where you pull it from as long as it's one of those, those angles that you've used. Copy it. And I need to adjust this shape to this angle. I'm just going to do this one quick. If I select these two, I should be able to drag it. And I have my, my smart guides on, so it should, it clicks. You'll feel it kind of jump to the line and that'll save you some time. That should be good enough. Tyler, are you self-taught or did you go to college to get a degree in design? Uh, I did go to school. Uh, I went to Francis Marion University here in South Carolina, United States, and I got a degree in visual communications where, again, they, they taught me the principles of design, you know, and I, I was introduced to these tools, but when it came down to like, illustrating and really making logos and, and brands that it's, it takes all the time you have outside of class to do those things. So that's something to think about. Okay. So let's, let's make the coffee cup. We need to go ahead and speed this up. So the, for the coffee, I know that a coffee cup is this, I mean, don't really need many references for how to do that. We're just going to do a rectangle. Just pick a color. I'm not going to stick to this color, but all right. So that's going to be the coffee cup. And then we need to think about the circle. That's going to be the rim. A couple ways you could do this. Uh, if you want it exact, you can go up here and copy and paste your dimensions of this. But since we're running quick, Use your ellipse tool and with your actual smart guides on, it'll snap within that shape to give you the proper cylinder you need. If I was spending more time on this, I mean, you could sit there and say, how do you find uh, a cylinder in this angle, in this perspective? Uh, a couple different ways you could do that. You could use the 3D tool. I typically don't use the 3D tool just because it just lags my computer so much and slows it down to where I, I could barely use it. So that's, that's usually not what I want. And the file size gets pretty large. So there's this. Now we kind of have a coffee cup. Let's make some dimension, copy, and then command F. Again, I copied that same shape above itself. And then hold option shift shrinks it down in from the center. So now I have the inside of the coffee cup, which is going to be a darker color. And don't spend too much time on the handle. Let's say it's about it's about like that, right? So what I'm going to do there, send that back. I'm going to adjust it. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm not going to spend too much time with it. Copy, Command F, shrink it from the center. That's one then, tiny. What's that? 
That's one tiny hand that's going to hold that handle. I know. This is this is a too too small of a cup of coffee for me. I need I need a smaller a bigger one than that. All right. So now you kind of see how that kind of started shaping up. Let's change that to white. Let's change this to like a lighter gray. Let's change that to let's say there. I'm going to group this object. So I selected all of that. I'm going to do command G to group. Now all of these shapes are always going to be together and I'm going to bring it on over here. All right, right about there. All right. Let's see if we can race to get this figure. This is probably not something I would want to leave at the very end because the figures are pretty hard to do, but Let's put me to the test. This is a sketch that I did. So I did this sketch. You saw the original that I did, and then I didn't like it, so I just I redrew the, the girl that's in that figure a little bit better. So here's where my layers come into play. This sketch is on my reference layer down here. I'm gonna go up to my figure layer, and I'm gonna lock everything else except my figure layer. That figure layer is above my sketch. So what I can do with this, this is a good tip. If you hold command and click on the eyeball that's on that layer, it's gonna turn that layer into an outline layer. So watch what happens when I start drawing on top of it. It's gonna change the shape so where I can see through the shape and I can draw on top of this figure pretty quickly. You see the lines? It's just like outline mode, but it's doing that to the whole layer. I use this quite a bit. This is where your layers come into play. I, I use layers primarily for this. You know, you could say organizations, why you should do it, but I do it so I can, I can really see my shapes. Now I'm just trying to get these angles right. This is where you'll spend a lot of time just trying to finesse, get these angles. Because again, you could tell when it's off, but it's hard to tell why or how to fix it. So it just start to play with it. I'm just gonna mess mess around with the hair first. That original Wacom drawing I did of the girl pulling the shark out the screen, it, it was built exactly like how I'm doing right now with this this illustration. I just used a pen tool. That's what this is, by the way. Some people use the brush. Uh, I feel like I have more control over a pen, the pen tool, because I'm plotting points. All right, I just did the whole outline of her hair. Click off. It's there. You may not see it, but it's this little line right here. It's still there. All right, let's move quickly into the head. It's about there. Get the cheek. Hey, Tyler, we have plenty of time. Okay. So uh, we're really excited to see where you're going. So don't feel rushed. Just keep working. We're here to okay. see if we go over time. That's fine. Awesome. Let's see if I can have a, a personal record, I guess, <laughs> and still give you something nice to look at. But we're you know, this in quarantine, we have time. <laughs> you're right. You are right. This is going to go under the hair. So I'll just make that shape pretty arbitrary since it's gonna be underneath the hair. What else are we dealing with? We need to get the glasses. Just using my ellipse tool, you can make glasses pretty easily that way. Maybe slightly distort them since She's going to be in an angle once we put her in that box. That's that for there. We need to get this here. That's underneath her head. Think about how these shapes are going to be laid out. They're going to, they're going to be scattered, some below her neck, some above her neck. So the things that go below her head, I mean, I'm not worried about what that looks like over there, as long as what you see looks good. And then we're going to draw her body. A little shoulder. 
I'm just using the pen tool. Uh, I'm plotting points. Luckily for this concept, it gives me a little bit of lead way with shapes. I mean, I'm trying to mimic a plastic figurine. You know, there's not much detail in those if you, if you know what that looks like. So don't get too lost in the details for subject matter. That's one arm and I'm jumping across. I just want to try to get the whole figure here before I start fine tuning everything because I'm going to have to jump back in here and really edit the shapes and define the features. Maybe I'll do the shirt and leave the hands separate. Yeah. All right, so what have I been doing? I've been doing this. I've been drawing a bunch of shapes. Here's my true outline mode. If you do command Y, you could see, you could see the lines. I didn't like this hand being here. I'm gonna delete that hand, delete those points. I still have that arm, that arm still exists. I just deleted the hand portion of it. I need to connect that. So if you select two points, like how I just did, if you do command J, it will connect between those points. So that's a pretty helpful tool. Just create a little bit of dimension to that piece. All right, so now I'm gonna start working in the shapes and I'll show you how things kind of come together. I was also telling you earlier in the process, I kind of want to mimic this girl that I previously had done. I like little opportunities to play with hair. It's just the fun shapes you can make with that. You start to see the, the figure now, which is pretty fun to see. She's coming together. She has like a yellow shirt on. Mm, red glasses. I'm over here. I'm looking at this. Okay. So this glass, this frame doesn't look right. So I'm going to duplicate this one. And if you're trying to get a couple different objects to look similar, I mean, just duplicate it. It, it saves you so much time. There's no real reason to try to make perfect shapes from scratch every time. This one should be a little larger since it's closer to us. Think about our perspective. I'm going to do that. If you have these two shapes that you just filled selected, you can mash, uh, I think it's, it's shift X. Yeah. Shift X will switch a solid shape to a stroke fill. That's a pretty cool feature. And that'll start saving you plenty of time. So you don't have to go up here in this box and, and click around. All right, let's say about, about there. The frames. It's about the right. Since the ear is going to have to overlap that frame, I might have to remake this ear. But it's going to be in the same color as the, the face, so it looks seamless. But that's a whole different shape. Okay, there's this. All right, let's get back into drawing her. So get back over to your layers, hold command, click on the eyeball for that layer, and it will then click to show you this view. All right, so I have one arm there. I have one arm here. This arm isn't completed. Where does this arm go? Let's delete this. I think I'm going to make that differently. Make this arm individual. Okay, now we need to make 
or so. Let's go ahead and quickly do this. And I'm just rounding it. All right, so if you're plotting points and if you're using uh, the pen tool quite a bit, you'll notice that most people struggle with this right here. They struggle with their curves. They struggle with how do I get smooth curves? How do I um, plot my points, so to speak? The trick to that is I'm plotting loosely, but if I see an angle that I want to adjust, if you, I'm not clicking anything, if you hold option, you see how your cursor turns to an angle? You see that? That, once you click, you can hold option and I can change the angle like on a fly. It's pretty cool. Delete that. But just to show you, I mean, try to use that feature if you can. So when you're plotting with your pen tool, you can hold option and it'll give you the two handles. And those two handles allow you to adjust that curve. Okay, so we're gonna also now get back down to the pants. And I'm just gonna be pretty loose with this for right now. Tyler, where do you learn all those shortcuts for Illustrator? Is there a guide? Uh, well, want? you can find them in the program. There, there's a uh, dialog box. If you go under settings where you can customize your shortcuts, I've never customized my shortcuts. I, I just use the, the presets. Uh, there's a couple ways of looking at that. If you customize everything to your own shortcuts, you're gonna have some problems if you're switching computers. If it's not your computer and you're working on it and they don't have the loaded presets that you have, you're gonna kind of be lost. So I like to keep it to the, the standard presets. Uh, but how I typically find them, I mean, I Google. I, I've gotten pretty good at um, knowing how to search certain words and know how to find what I'm looking for by, you know, broadly searching YouTube. Uh, again, Google or Adobe Forms. So many people have suffered from things that we're trying to, to, to do. And it just takes finding that article or little piece of information that they've posted. So that's why it's so important for all of us just to share our process. I mean, even me just doing this, you know, I'm, I'm able to show someone who might struggle with the pen tool, you know, how to do it a little better. And I hope you're able to build something off from what I've done. That's kind of my mission statement. Thank you, Tyler. All right, let's get to the feet. The sketch on this one was a little little goofy looking. So I, I might have to address this a little differently in my actual vector. Mm. It's a little pointy. I'm gonna turn my outline mode off. Now I'm seeing the foot change this angle. We'll just make some generic looking shoes. It's like a cartoon. Again, I have to think back like, all right, we're making an action figure. So you have to use those same principles because everything that you're illustrating is, it should have a set of principles to it. Whether that's, you know, this is a, a make believe character that doesn't exist or this is a spoof of an action figure. I mean, those apply to what I'm making. Merge and shapes, again, you, you see how often I use it. There's that shape, just change the color right there. Giver. What color shoes did I use? It's like this weird, funny, funny looking color. I'm going to create a swatch eyedropper tool. 
Because I, I kind of like basing it from this illustration. I think that's kind of fun. So this is her shoe color. Her foot looks a little awkward. I don't know what kind of shoes these are. But we're going to go with it. Tyler, how do you know, how do you know where to apply lights and shadows in your characters? Diana Marquez wants to know. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't think it's any sort of true technique. I mean, I, I'm kind of eyeballing it. I just know that my light source, for instance, this, my light is kind of coming from this angle. So I'm going to try to have, uh, you know, a shadow on the left side, highlight on the right side, and typically the top of a piece. And you'll notice that when we get to the plastic, the top of the piece is usually another like a second highlight color. And um, you have to have a spectrum of it so you can have your light to dark. Uh, I would say start simple, start with a box. If you can just make a cube in Illustrator, you'll, you'll see all the size, sides of that box that's available or visible. And that's, that's kind of where you start. Um, try to get the colors right on a cube to make it look three dimensional. And then, you know, you start working your way up on shapes. You'll see, uh, you'll see how they're, they're still similar and they still apply to just about anything that you do. All right, so hand, just this little generic hand. I think it's about like that. Kind of goes behind the, the body. Need to also, I'll change the, this arm could probably be a slightly darker color. This arm could be a slightly, this right here is exactly answering your question. How do you handle light? So I know that this arm is further away from her. So that needs to be a darker color. This arm is closer to us. So maybe make it a little bit lighter. Kind of like that. It's funny how like once the colors start playing together like that, it just, it brings it out. It, it feels, feels right. But I'm just fine tuning right now, going back, playing with my, my curves. I think this, this shouldn't cut in completely. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a shape above it, select it, select that face, use my shape builder tool, get that little centerpiece, select it, command copy. All right. Now that's command copy. That's in my clipping board. So don't, don't do anything besides command Z, command Z until you get back to where you started. Now, I'm going to close this up. This was a mistake. So again, I, I thought of a better way to doing this. Now mash command F. That's that shape that we built. We'll connect it to there. So why did I do that? I did that so that I can now create that color as a shadow. Like that. I think our hand should be that same color. And then I need to make this other hand. And you're starting to see it come together, I hope. It, it just takes building one shape at a time. I'm just getting the placement of the shape right. So this hand looks kind of kind of quirky. This thumb doesn't look right. I'm gonna tweak the angles. This hand looks a little bit too big. Should be smaller on one side.
So Tyler, when somebody is starting out working with vector, mm -hmm. what do you recommend they start drawing? Uh, what kind of things mm -hmm. I would, I would find things that, that first off inspires you. I mean, if you're inspired by something, you're more willing to put hours and hours into it to get it right. Uh, if it's not that inspiring or if it, if it doesn't create some sort of creative uh, energy to you, it's, it's hard to put that much time into something. I mean, that's with anything. And that's definitely the case for me. I, I started with, uh, I think the first thing I ever tried to do was I illustrated, you know, the movie, The Revenant with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio in it. Yes. That movie. It. Yeah. So that movie had just came out right around the same time I got this Wacom. So that's when I was starting to take things serious. And I wanted to, I wanted to create a poster. I was like, this would be cool. I had this idea. Like, what if it was, you know, half the poster was Leo's face and the other half was a bear. You know, if you know that movie, that was a big scene. So I was like, well, how do I do that? <laughs> I've never illustrated a face. I wasn't that good at, you know, making a, a bear look real. But what I did was I, I just took that challenge and I researched a style that I liked and I just sat there for hours until I, I got it to where it's like, oh, that kind of looks like a person. And then it was like, all right, so what is not making it look like Leo? <laughs> and I was asking questions like that. And, you know, trial and error until finally I, I stepped away and I was like, yeah, that, that looks a lot better. And then I'll tweak it some more and then I'll show somebody else. And then they'll say, oh, dude, that's really cool doesn't look quite like Leo, but his nose is weird. I was like, oh, his nose. So then I went back and now it's just spent another hour, two hours on the nose until I got it right. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I found a project that I thought was really fun and inspiring. And I sat there until I got it right. I wouldn't probably say start with the most elaborate design because you're going to exhaust yourself and get frustrated. The biggest thing that I overcome as a designer was frustration. I was, I would get so frustrated. It's like, Oh, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. And I'll quit. I would just stop. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. I'm going to use this hand. Do you prefer to use RGB color or CMYK? Uh, I, I prefer R, RGB. But that's mainly because my artwork, I don't print a lot of it. I, a lot of it stays digital. Uh, so whenever I'm editing my colors, like in Photoshop, I'm just using a RGB scale. I'm not having to use a CMYK scale, which sometimes can mute your colors. I love vibrant colors like you get from RGB. But I mean, if you're starting to print stuff, you, you need to use... CMYK. I mean, there's no way around that. But something like this, I know this is a digital illustration. I know it's not going to be printed. At least I, I don't think it is. And then that means I, I could just kind of choose whichever I want. Let's do this headband. I hope that answered that question. Thank you, Tyler. Many people in many webinars ask us similar question to this one. Well, how do you know when a piece is finished? When do you know when to mm -hmm. stop? And Angela just asked this uh, right now. What's your method? How, how do you know when to stop? Uh, there's, there's a lot of factors. All right, so if I'm talking about my personal illustrations, I know when to stop when I've checked a particular set of boxes. My boxes include, all right, does this, all right, look at what I'm illustrating. Does this look like my idea? Not exactly like it, but it's looking refined. It's looking clean. It's looking more fleshed out. Those are check boxes. So I'm trying to think of, all right, what else needs to happen to make it look 
you know, accurate. And that could be anything from color to, you know, the, the shapes. But I think what defines stopping is if that, if it comes across, I guess, right. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say like that, but there's definitely a feeling to it. I can feel when something's wrong or right. I guess that's an instinct. I guess you could say that comes with experience. Um, asking questions. You got to ask questions about it. Be your worst critic sometimes, not always, but it helps to question what you're doing. And if that's the best choice, that's the only way that you're going to know to push yourself. That's what's worked for me, at least. Thank you. This is going to be the little tie cords that are in the box. So this would be kind of fun to work on in a bit. I'm sending this shape back, so I need to, there we go. There. All right, I think there's two, one around here. Because, you know, all these little action figures are usually tied into the box with like twist ties. I want to uh, kind of mimic that a little bit. Yeah, those ties are really hard to come off. I once broke a tooth trying to what? Get it out by biting it. I was a child, yeah. Oh man. That's not good. All right, I need to get the face in here real quick. Let's get the nose. Do you calculate the perspective of your figurine with the packaging or is it all eyeballing? So uh you no. Know. Uh, this right now it's eyeballing. Um, I'm just trying to get the general shapes there. Uh, once I drag it over and put it in the box, I will probably have to fine tune a little bit more, but, uh, it's generally there. I mean, this is going to be a tricky part because it's, this is where I think, I mean, I struggle sometimes with how do you depict the nose in a three dimensional, three dimensional perspective uh it changes every time so always some new variables in there so i'm checking in with you tyler we just asked the chat if they wish to continue and they all want to continue watch your work so okay thank you rush everybody is learning from the session thank you awesome yeah i'm I, i'm probably biting off more than i should with an illustration like this but I think it, it gives you something at least to, to look back on. And, and if you want to look at some of my previous work, you'll, you'll understand the process is the same for all of it. It just takes a little bit of time and you get quicker with your tools, the more you do. So that helps. Mm, let's see. How do you prevent overlapping shapes when drawing with the pen tool? Sarah is asking us in the Q&A. Uh, you can smart guides, uh, smart guides help. Uh, and that's kind of why I cut a lot of my shapes out. You know, we were using the, the shape builder and in the uh, other um, areas of this illustration where I was just cutting things out from each other that that helps you because it's there is no overlap once you cut it out Maybe give her a red lipstick. Um, Tyler, is that? What's up? How did you choose the color of the shadows there? Uh, well, this is based off of a, a previous illustration I did. But what I did, though, I have my, this is like my main color here. 
in the center, like our chest. And then there should be a lighter color, which should be closer to you. And then there should be a darker color, which is the furthest shape, which is like this arm. Because you have to think about her in, in the world that we're in. So if I was looking at you, you know, you're, the arm further away from you should be a little darker if there's no light source over there. So I kind of build the shapes like that. I mean, it gets very loose. It's, for instance, there, there should probably be a darker shadow here on her leg since that's getting closer to the, or further away from the light source. But just for the sake of time, you know, certain things can kind of work without having that. So this would be, I would just darken it just like this. All right, so I think this is probably good enough for me to duplicate her. I'm gonna drag her over. I'm gonna do Command G to group her. And I'm gonna scale her down. Make sure you're holding Shift because if you don't hold Shift, she's gonna go all over the place and get distorted. I'm gonna just kind of place her in the center of my shape like that. All right, see how that kind of came to be. And you know, something I actually just thought about, this packaging should have a thickness to it. So we need to, we need to add that. And this is where we'll handle that in a bit. Now we're starting to ship her. Are we still good on time? Are you, you fine? We're good. Perfect. We're good, thank you. All right, so same idea as before. I'm going to gonna make this card stock a little bit thicker. So you see that right there is going to be that flat edge on the cardstock. I'm going to select this cardstock, nothing else, and I'm going to duplicate and drag. So, you know, I, I held option and then I dragged the shape over. So this is a duplicated version of that cardstock. That's also positioned to the very back. So you can't see this unless it overlaps. And I'm going to connect this to this angled line. Because again, I can't stress enough when doing these illustrated illustrations and perspectives are any sort of angle, you've got to keep consistencies in your angles. So that's why I'm constantly repeating and duplicating that same angle over and over. So there is no, there is no way to get that, that line off because it's the same one. All right. So this is what I did. So I'm going to select that, select, oh, select the front, select the back, select the angle that we just messed with. And then I need to shift M and merge this shape. See what I did there? Now it's a, its own shape. So if I mash command Y, this shape right here, command C, we're going to copy that shape we just built. And then we're gonna go backwards, delete that, delete that, and then do Command F, paste into place. So now we've got a little bit of dimension to it. And this should be a little darker color, something like that. I'm just messing with my, my black palette. And then see what else are we missing? I think I might've missed this shape up here. All right, let's see if we can do this right. So that there should be also another piece there. So I can just do this. I wouldn't normally do it like this, but it gets the job done too.
And I'm just trying to build this three dimensional look. Okay. So where we need to be is we need to get this line flush and get this line flush up here. So we're just going to copy that line, that same angle. We've used it this entire illustration. We've used the same angle. Because it's like a master key. I mean, it gives us the perfect perspective every time. I'm going to just kind of bud this shape up. Honestly, I don't think I need to do that. No. I'm just going to select that. And then select this one. I think this should be a simple one to do. I'm merging the shape to here. Zoom in. There we go. Copy. See, now we have a little flush edge there. Got to do that same thing up here too. Just bring that line down. Try to get it to cross both of these curves. So that would be the flush. Yeah, it just takes time. Uh, you, you can't always get this right every, every try, but just, just work with it. That's where it comes into play patience. Like I was saying, you can stress yourself out so easily and what you'll get from that is just frustration and you don't get to finish. <laughs> All right. So. I just want you to know, Tyler, some of um, your audience today is joining us from Italy, from Argentina. Oh, wow. New Jersey. Well, hello, and thank you to everyone who's joined me. Uh, Bulgaria um, also here. Thank you guys for joining us. That's Colombia, awesome. I Atlanta. Thank you guys. Thank you for that's staying awesome. with us. Yeah, I mean it's it's so funny to to see how how close we can all get just because of uh design. I mean, we're all here sharing this moment and seeing what can sometimes be pretty vulnerable with sharing processes and and just talking about what you do for a living. Um it's exciting. I am also right now just making glares. These glares are going to go over that plastic because you see how you can't see through this. But if we add glares, I can, I can then change the opacity of it. All right. So these are all going to be like that shiny reflection on the plastic. Uh, kind of picked them by random. Uh, I like to think of it as a thicker line, smaller line, a thicker line, and maybe a solid. I'll show you what I mean using my shift M. Now you see I'm hovering. All right. So now you see all these little shapes. I'm going to, I'm going to change the, if you change the color while you're merging shapes, it only changes the color of the things that you merge. So there's one, two, three. Uh, I don't know if I want to do this one or not. I'm going to leave that one alone. So I'm going to select these red shapes, copy them, command Z, all the way to the beginning because I don't want to do anything besides build on top. So command F now it's on top. So that's one shape. You see, I didn't really cut out of that, but it's laying on top of it now because I duplicated it. Let's go to this. Let's change this like to 10%, maybe 15 changing the opacity of that color. 
And then now we're left with these, which will be like that. And I'll change the opacity of these, maybe, maybe 35. Again, I'm kind of guessing, I'm, I'm seeing what looks good. Same for these. So these guys need to, that should probably be one, one shape. Change this to like 80% maybe. See, it kind of gives that effect of it being in plastic now. Mm, I gotta do the same thing for this guy. I'm gonna use the same angle that I used for the glare. So I copied the line, I pasted it. And again, if you hold shift and option and drag, it doesn't change the angle when you expand it. What that does, it that just makes it longer. That angle is the same. And I'm using that angle again to keep with my glares because I want my glares to be the same on both of these plastic pieces. And I'm dragging and copying. I'm just placing them. I'll show you where they land. All right, so that's, those are my lines. I select that plastic piece, shift M, and I'm going to now start filling in these like that. I might actually, honestly, I want to do one small one. And add this one right here. All right, so one, two, three, whoops, four. Four little glares that I've added to this. So copy, command Z, go back to the beginning. It seems very repetitive, but I trust me, you'll, you'll save so much time when you realize that you have built your shapes above each other rather than cutting into them and there is no way to go back to it. So Command F, select that. I'm eye dropping tool the same opacity of before. Okay, that looks about right. All right, now I'm gonna probably tweak this color a bit. Something a little more vibrant. I'm just playing around. Um, I did have a color palette up here uh, let's see how these look. No, no. Yeah, I don't like those. It's pretty fluid right now. Just tweaking. Now, it up there that each illustrator comes with unlimited design revisions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's the ultimate prize for anyone who wants to have a designer. Unlimited revisions. I don't know about that. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Do you use actions on your key on your keyboard or on your Wacom? Uh, my keyboard. So if you, you see it in this other camera, this is my keyboard out here. I'm constantly just doing this. Uh, I know you could preset your Wacom remote to do it. I, I just was, was used to using the keyboard because I also have my mouse. My mouse is right here. So if I'm, you know, I have two monitors. I have this and then I have this one up here you can't quite see. And, you know, I'm having to go back and forth because I'm looking, you know, browsing, checking emails with the mouse. Struggling with this color, what should it be? What should it be, you guys? Put it in the chat. Let's help Tyler paint out. Yeah, that'd be fun. Let's see what we got. Do we like where we were heading or do we like where we were before? I like the purple and so does Sarah. Let's see.
More pink, they say. More pink. <laughs> Could work with that. Yeah, I typically have a uh, a color palette I, I gravitate towards. That's just, I think every artist or designer has a preference. I do go for tans, pinks, earth tones. I don't know why. I just, I think they're pretty soothing to me. And you'll see a lot of my work is, is like that. Honestly, I'm going to lock my plastic layer because that's, that's in front of what I need. And change this little bit, something like that. So Tyler, what's the what's the creative pain? Uh, yeah, so creative pain is is my my brand and company where I have generated a way to talk to other creatives and create tutorials and, and kind of do engagements like how we're doing right now. And along with, you know, marketing and making products for creatives, it's kind of like my, my ultimate client, if I wanted to think about it that way, where how can I talk to people who are like myself, who, you know, I'd like to think of myself as a, a creative and, you know, I love talking to other creatives and sharing ideas and walking through process. So I wanted to brand that and let that be an opportunity for people to share and, and support and embrace the creative process. Because I think a lot of times people see it as a scary, scary subject. You know, it's like, oh, what if I have creative block? What if I, I can't break through and, you know, that deadline's tomorrow. What am I supposed to do? Well, this is that, that idea where it's okay to not know. It's just a process. Uh, it's okay to understand that we're all learning and no matter what level you're at, it just takes time. I mean, we're kind of talking about that now where you might not know how to figure something out, but you can work at it and, and keeping your cool. If you keep your cool, you're, you're going to be fine because I think the people who lose their cool and you know, they, they can't hang in there and, and just, understand that it's just, I mean, we're just making something. It's not the end of the world. We're, we're going about this like any other designer. It's a process. So the creative pain allows that to be the front, um, the frontier to creating something and, and being enlightened and trying to just enjoy the process. That's kind of the, the pitch to it. Thank you for creating that. You're welcome. It's, it's fun to do. And, and it gives me an outlet to where a lot of my illustrations are based around the creative pain and the pencil head. And that's the logo. And that little guy represents all of us. You know, sometimes people ask, is that, is that little guy you? Because he has a pencil going through his head. Is that, is that the creative process? I was like, no, that's, that's a creative because I see all of us as, as one person. Outline stroke. All right. Work alone, Tyler, or do you have uh, any partners or employees that uh, help you? No, I primarily work alone. Uh, I have you know people I bounce ideas from and off of, but um, you know again I I freelance, so I spend most of my time here and you know in my office and and trying to work through stuff the best I can. Uh, what I'm doing right now is sorry. Um, trying to change the colors of things. So I'm selecting a bunch of different things, I'm trying to see what other options I have. Something vibrant. Oops. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know about these colors, but we're going to figure it out. Go back to my old fateful colors, which are usually tan. And Tyler, do you use the shape shape builder most of the times instead of the pathfinder? 
Andres Jaramillo is asking us. Mm -hmm. I do, uh, primarily because I can do that with the key command. So I can, uh, I don't think you, I don't know how to do Pathfinder tools with key commands. Maybe you could set that up in custom, custom preference, but Shape Builder, you're able to do it with a key command and not have to bother with dealing with the Pathfinder. But I mean, there are some times where you have to get over there and, and use the Pathfinder, but primarily I use Shape Builder. Yeah, just bear with me real quick. I'm trying to just nail down these colors. And this is kind of the process too. I mean, it's give or take. I don't know what the end result's gonna be just like all of you. I know it's gonna be hopefully cool. You know, I'll, I'm gonna skip a step and I'm gonna show you kind of what I do when I'm struggling with colors, which might help you guys. So you see that this illustration right now is kind of, it's got its tones, it's got its highlights and shadows, but the colors are just not, not looking good. So here is a tip to, to help that. I will sometimes select this whole piece All right, so we got this whole piece selected, right? Copy it. Now I'm gonna go to Photoshop. I'm gonna do Command V. I'm gonna pay, paste this in here as a smart object. So this is that vector shape, but now it's in Photoshop. So I'm struggling with my colors, but you know what, an easier way for me to find colors is to do this. I just turn on a curve and I'm just going to mess around with these curves until I get something that looks kind of cool. It's just a lot faster to, to see all the colors change at once. Alrighty, I'm sort of liking this a bit. Yeah, you see how I'm, I'm able to really kind of play within those color parameters and really see what I got to work with. Let's see, I like that. But what do we, what do we all think about this? I love it. What do you guys think in the chat? Do you guys like that combination? I think it's, I think it's really nice. It looks like your background. Mm -hmm. Let's play with that a little more. We like it. Awesome. Yeah, I like the pinks. Maybe something like that. All right. So you see what we just did with that? What's going to happen now is going to save this out. Let's just do very high. And my desktop. All right, so that's on my desktop right now. Get back on over to here. Now we're back in Illustrator. So if I were to look at my desktop, I now have this little guy we just made. Well, guess what this little thing has? It has all the colors we need. That's probably the best way I could tell you how to fine colors on the fly. So what we do now is select what is now this back card. Just select it. Mash select, same fill color. So it's selected everything with that fill color. Now I'm just going to click on this and you're going to do that for each color. Select, same fill color. And we'll click on this section. You see how I'm starting to uh, recolor that object now in a very quick method. 
the the plastic pieces might give me some trouble, but I'll just lock those for now. Because those plastic pieces are opacities. Mm. See this, I'm just switching this real quick. So that's kind of a quick tip on how to change colors fast. I, I could go through all of these colors, but I think uh, I want to get to a point where I can kind of wrap up. And I think the best way to do that is to show the final step to every piece that I do. Okay, so I think this pretty much gets the idea. This is what we agreed on. We like this color. I think yeah. we could have I think we could have done something a little bit on the Wacom, but for time's sake, I think I think we can we can work with that. I could probably put y'all's logo on there. How about that? I'm gonna use the Oh wow, yeah. Select if you do E, you can manipulate it if you can grab it. Sometimes hard to grab it. Come on. There we go. Hold shift. It's going to scale it or skew it directly down. And then that should be our angle. Like that. All right. So this is actually what I would do. If I had my colors all nailed down, I would then select this object, kind of how we did in finding the colors, which is this, let's delete that. I would then bring that shape in here. Take these off, because that's how we found the color palette. Remember, we just switched all the colors, so. Oh, you know what I just did? I forgot to take the plastic level or layer off. All right, now do it, do that again. There we go. So now that I have this, I'm going to create my background color. I do this, I just build a shape. Let's make it a nice tan. And all right, this is what <laughs> this is what everybody asks me all the time. <clears throat> How do you do your textures? Real quick, I only use like three brushes. So to start off. I'm on texture one. And I have one or two texture brushes I love to use, which are subtle noise. Subtle noise, which is like just a bunch of, uh, you see that? I don't know if you could see that. That's what I'm doing, little specks. We see it. All right, so I'm just clicking around. I'm behind this illustration. So everything that's showing is bleeding from behind this illustration. And I just kind of do a once over like that. That's putting noise in there. I'll change the size to like various sizes. Like some are thicker than the other. It's the same brush. It's nothing special to it. I'm just clicking, clicking all around with my, my mouse. And I will repeat this about four times. So I did that with a dark color. I did that with a stark black. So what happens if you start doing that with a, a white with like 9% yellow? Do the same thing. I'm going to kind of click all around. You may not see it, but it'll all kind of blend together once you start zooming out. Texture three. Now I'm above the shape. Hold command, click on your vector illustration. You just highlighted that shape. So everything that you click on is only gonna show above that shape. This is the magic right here. So this is where I get my noise. 
I manually do it. You could do this in presets, but I like to have full control. Changing the size of the, the noise, so I'm getting very small pieces and then thicker pieces. I'll do that again. Noise. I'll do noise dark. That's what I'll label it. And then I'll change that to like a black. Do the same. You see how it's all starting to, to get this fuzzy retro look to it. I'm just clicking around. It helps to do it with the, the mouse because if you do it sometimes with the pen, it'll do pressure sensitivity and, and I don't like to do pressure sensitivity with my noise. And then I'm going to do, this is a good one. This stand one. I'm going to switch the brush to, this is like a watercolor brush that I, that I have. It does this. Let's kind of put a once over, change my opacity to like a soft, let's say overlay, turn that down, start deleting it in some of these areas that don't need it. Okay, and I'm gonna do that one more time, but instead of using, um, I'm just, oops, that'll be fine. Don't mind the spelling of these layers. Uh, so this is now gonna be the same, but with a white, doing the same thing. And then do overlay. And then you need to get in there and start deleting in some areas like here. I'm just trying to get something that looks more like paper, something that looks more like plastic. I'm, I'm really just, I'm playing with my textures. That's the point of, of this step. We need to get things that look like texture. And I'll then get in here with a typical tapered brush, like what you see here. This comes with every, like everybody has this brush. This is just a tapered brush. But I bet if you haven't, you'll learn a lot by going down to a one pixel brush and change it to white. And you see that watercolor brush that I did this pattern with? You see how it has these lines? Just kind of follow them. So I'm going to create these highlights on top of it. Oh, I got my brush. All right, let's do that again. All right, yeah. All right, so see this? This is where the Cintiq comes in play and it does wonders. The pressure sensitivity is exactly how I want it. And I'm just eyeballing it, but I'm just causing these little distress lines. You see how that now starts to come together? And this looks a little rugged. That's amazing. That was a really good. Yes. It just adds a little more depth that you, well, at least I couldn't get in vector. And I always end here. And this, honestly, this goes as far and as long as you want to go. Uh, I will spend about an hour or two hours in this process because there's so much you can distress. You know, all the little tears that I make, all the little grooves and like imperfections, I manually create like this. And you see how I just, I'm doing this with a white. You can mix it up, change your color, go to a dark, you know? See, now it's like shadows rather than highlights. Doing it, you know, pretty loose. I, even though I'm, I'm going 
a little quick right now. I, I typically do this process pretty quick. And I'm just, think about something that's been on a shelf, that's been shuffled around for about a year. And some, you know, it's gotten wet, it's dried out, and it's gotten old. How do you, how would that look to you? That's how I kind of came up with this style. It's just kind of what I imagine is old and rugged. And to final, lies everything. I sometimes do a one more uh, slight color enhancement. All right. Just kind of have fun with it. I mean, you can do whatever. I sometimes do a vibrance. Take some of the saturation away. Play with the opacities but yeah that's that's pretty much it i i know this is went a little long but i think uh i think this is getting where i want it and again you could play with the textures as long as you want you could just kind of have a field day with it and the more stress and the more details you can put in when you're what is this this is 400 times for me the more details you can put in at this zoom the better it's going to look that's that is the magic and the trick to it. Uh, you just need to spend some time in here. I'm doing this. I'm just mac making scratches, tearing up some stuff. But, but yeah. I think this color could, here could be different. And you could always, always double click that, that um, object that we pasted in and it'll open it back up in Illustrator. So don't, doesn't mean it's gone. See? Awesome. Was there, was there any questions? I think this is probably a good stopping point to, to yeah. kind of look at it. Guys, if you have any final questions, this is the moment to send them. I'm going to wrap it up pretty soon. But I know we went over, but it was very rewarding to watch your entire process from beginning to end to show us how you make, uh, I mean, yeah. really, how everything comes to, together. Mm -hmm. um, Step by step from the shapes, the shadows, the colors, mm -hmm. the textures. Thank you so much for taking the time to to go over it step by step. Absolutely. Guys, if you have questions, please go uh, follow Tyler on his social media. He is also, I know because I follow him a lot, he's always <laughs> questions and he's very active there. So if you were inspired by today's talk, I encourage you to, to follow him on his creative journey. Any final thoughts and messages you want to share with our audience, Tyler, before we let you go? Uh, I would just say that, you know, let's, let's try to take advantage of this time where we're having to spend more hours inside and on a computer. And really, this is a moment for us to practice and, and be the best that we can be. If, if that's illustrating, you need to fall head over heels with illustrating. You need to do it every day. You need to, you know, really hone in on those abilities because it just takes time. I mean, none of this came overnight. I, it, it's taken seven years and I still have plenty of things I want to do. So I'm making lists and I'm trying to, to check them off one day at a time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much guys for joining us on this two hour journey. Thank you, Tyler, for staying with us an extra hour and showing everything. Absolutely. Again, Tyler works on Illustrator. He's a vector expert. If you want to right. ask him questions, follow him along. Thank you so much, Tyler. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to share again the code for our discount here. Have a great Thursday, people. Enjoy your week.